hello and welcome to this lecture in which we will consider the definitions of a process and we will see what a quasi equilibrium process means and then we will study what the properties of a pure substances are. So, let us consider again the prototypical image that of a piston cylinder arrangement. Okay. So, this confines some gas for example or let us say it is not confining a gas, yeah I mean it does not matter really, it confines some substance. Okay. So, now suppose this piston is loaded with a bunch of weights, it is loaded with small slabs of weight which can be removed and replaced as required. So, now whatever the amount of mass we have here plus the mass of the piston, mass of weights plus mass of piston, this is the total mass acting on the substance, the gas in this case. Okay. So, the pressure is defined as P 1 and it is occupying some, so suppose we know that the total mass of the gas is equal to m, the initial volume if it is V 1, then the specific volume V 1 is equal to capital V 1 by mass, this is the specific volume. So, this is the initial state, this is known as the initial state, this is the property of the gas. Okay. Now, suppose I remove one of the two or two or more of these small slabs, suppose I remove just one slab, the pressure has decreased slightly. P 2 has decreased slightly. And in this the fact that the pressure has reduced, so it means there is lesser load on the gas and the gas is free to expand, there is more space for the gas to go. So, all this is common sense, we know this from common experience. So, if this initial volume was V 1, because of the removal of one of the many slabs, it will occupy now a volume V 2 which is just larger than V 1. And thus, the space, so because it is a control mass, this is a control mass, the specific volume V 2 is equal to capital V 2 by the mass, the mass is fixed, the identity and the amount of mass is fixed, it is the same gas. Okay. So, essentially we have initiated a change from P 1 V 1 to P 2 V 2. If we draw it on the P V diagram, it was at a higher pressure and then because of the removal of the mass, it reduces the pressure and increases the volume. So, I have exaggerated and shown it like this. Now, suppose I remove one more plate one more slab, it goes here, I remove even one more, it goes here. So, this is how we are able to transition from one point to the second point to the third point to the fourth point and going from 1 to 2, the gas is said to be undergoing, undergoing a process. But how exactly can I know what the intermediate stage 1 to 2 is? I do not know exactly what is going on in between the stage. So, this brings us to a very important idea of a quasi equilibrium process. So, we assume that the amount of slabs are infinite, that the same mass is made up of infinitely many smaller slabs and we remove this, 
the finest slab possible so that while going from state 1 to state 2 the difference in pressure is so less that it is almost close. So, if I have even lighter slabs then 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5. If I have even smaller slabs then something may be like 1, this is 2, then 3, then 4, then 5 and so on. You get the idea. You can make more number of steps to go to the final state. We eventually go to a final state, but we make sure that the system is not disturbed from its initial condition too much. If I were to remove all the slabs in one go, then suddenly the piston would see that suddenly all the mass has been re released and the piston would fly off. And we do not have any information about what the process is happening during that non-equilibrium process. This kind of process is called as a non-equilibrium process. So, suddenly if it is removed, the P suddenly reduces, the V suddenly increases. So, the initial state is known, but maybe the final state is maybe something like this, it goes to the final state, it oscillates, maybe the piston oscillates and goes to the final state, maybe. We do not know exactly the nature of how the states will be, it is difficult to measure. So, a quasi equilibrium process is a slow process which disturbs the equilibrium very slightly, okay. it disturbs the equilibrium very slightly, so that between each step it is locally in equilibrium. So, here if the pressure is P4, the pressure is P4, basically if you remove all the slabs, the only thing that is exerting a force on the gas is the piston. And so, in this case the final pressure must correspond to that of the piston this final pressure should correspond to piston mass acting on the gas. So, that mass of piston divided by the area will give us the pressure, the final pressure. The final pressure in all of the cases will be the same, but in the case of non equilibrium process, we will not be able to discern exactly how the system went from the first state to the final state. In the case of quasi equilibrium process, we can carefully remove part by part the masses which are loading the piston, we will get to the final state. We will know each intermediate step, there is no question of non equilibrium, essentially implying that the pressure in this point and the pressure in this point, this point, this point everywhere would be equal. The system is instantaneously able to equilibrate to the small disturbance that you have created. This is called as a quasi equilibrium process. The word itself helps us to understand what the process should be like. It is a quasi equilibrium, it can never be in equilibrium. Okay. If a process, if a state is in equilibrium, there will be no tendency for it to move because it is by definition in equilibrium. So, every process inherently has to have some deviation from equilibrium, but the deviation if it is small the system relaxes very quickly to the newer state and we say that the system is undergoing a quasi equilibrium process. Okay. Let us now focus on the definition of a pure substance, we want to know what a pure substance is. A pure substance is something which is homogeneous and has an invariable chemical composition throughout. So, it needs to be homogeneous and invariant chemical composition. 
so by this we mean that if we consider a small vessel if there is some liquid water and some water vapor okay so the system uh, th th there can be more than one phase there can be more than one phase so it is homogeneous in the sense that the whole system com is comprised only of h2o the chemical composition throughout is simply h2o it is not changing its chemical composition okay so each phase has the same composition however if we had maybe co2 dissolved here then we would not call this as a pure substance because we have an additional component in this system so a pure substance is something which needs to have the same invariant phase so is a mixture of gas a pure substance so gas say for example air air is a mixture of many gases so is it a pure substance so as long as you do not have a phase change so if we consider air as a whole it is comprised of a fixed percentage of gases unless you have phase change those fractions remain more or less fixed if you work in a certain range of temperatures so given a certain range of temperatures and pressures air may be approximated as a pure substance okay so for a pure substance we need homogeneity so there is no heterogeneity in the domain it is uniform in space except if we change the phase so it is homogeneous in the vapor phase it is homogeneous in the liquid phase it is homogeneous everywhere in the liquid phase the properties are homogeneous there can be more than one phase and the chemical composition should be invariant so this is the most important definition what is a simple compressible substance simple compressible substance refers to those substances in which only mechanical effects of pressure and all this cause some work to be done the system is not affected by the presence of electric fields magnetic fields and so on okay in many cases actually in the generation of very very low temperatures there are various exotic effects those are used because at low temperature the physics changes drastically so in those kinds of conditions things are no more simple compressible okay one has to account for all those kinds of additional effects in which the magnetism the the dielectric properties of the substances are exploited to achieve some kind of phase change or property change okay so but in this course we will deal mostly with a simple compressible substance so only the mechanical so for example pressure work and all this we apply pressure on a piston you cause work on the piston this kind of things they are referred to as simple compressible substances so let us consider a vapor liquid equilibrium diagram let us consider a piston cylinder arrangement as shown there is some 
weight of the piston and there is some liquid water and then you start heating. So, suppose the initial condition of the water is 20 degree Celsius and maybe it is imposing a pressure of 100 kilo Pascal. So, just for your reference the atmospheric pressure is 101.325 kilo Pascal. This is one atmosphere. So, this is being heated. So, from common sense we know that because of the heating there will be a change slight change in volume. So, there is a slight increase in the volume the temperature increases. So, the temperature increases to maybe 85 degrees Celsius, but the pressure is remaining the constant remaining constant because you are not adding additional weights on the system. So, pressure remains constant you have essentially added heat and thus the temperature has increased the volume has also increased. Now, this goes on up until the temperature reaches something close to 100 degree Celsius, because we know at that point water starts to boil. So, I draw the situation at approximately 99.6 degree Celsius. So, there is some generation of vapor in this state, okay. some small amount of vapor is generated. Now, as more and more heat is given, we know that heat is absorbed as latent heat and liquid starts to transition to a vapor phase. So, vapor occupies far more volume than a liquid. So, suddenly the volume increases by a huge margin. So, the volume increases like this the temperature remains locked because we know everything is now latent it keeps on absorbing heat but the heat is absorbed to change the phase it is not used to increase the temperature up until the boiling point it was used to increase the temperature but now it is affecting a change in phase and so there is some vapor some liquid so, it the heat keeps on the temperature ke keeps on remaining constant up until the point all the liquid has been converted to vapor. After, after this if you keep on adding, so at all the points the pressure is 100 kilo Pascal. So, to have the quasi equilibrium process we are heating it in a very slow manner. So, after this now the temperature again starts to increase and the specific volume also starts to increase. If I take a larger temperature say becomes 110 degrees Celsius. Okay. So, the volume then keeps on increasing. So, what has happened? If I try to draw this in a T versus V diagram, initially I was at some temperature 20 degree Celsius and some specific volume. So, if I know the total mass of the liquid, total mass of the liquid is suppose 1 kg. So, initial volume is maybe 0.2 meter cube. Okay. So, then the initial condition actually we cannot choose this randomly because at these conditions the initial volume will be fixed. So, initial so the density is approximately 1000 kg per meter cube. So, for 1 kg it is approximately 1 liter. Okay. So, thus we can find out the dense uh, the specific volume as the total volume by the mass. So, this is that initial condition. So, now we keep on adding heat 
we are going slowly so these are some intermediate steps that we have shown intermediate step 1 2 3 4 5 6 so we keep on adding heat the temperature keeps on increasing up until a point where the temperature becomes equal to 99.6 degrees celsius then there is no increase in temperature but there is an increase in the volume keeps on increasing up until all the vapor is formed all the liquid has converted into vapor and then again the temperature starts to increase so in if i call this a b c and d b to c is phase change point b is the liquid saturation point point c is the vapor saturation point okay the temperature at which the phase change is beginning t of b equal to t of c is called as a saturation temperature and the pressure at corresponding to this saturation temperature is called as the saturation pressure all right so this is how the process has occurred now suppose i do the same process at a higher pressure how will it look it will start somewhere over here then it goes here then maybe it goes like this and goes like this at an even higher pressure it goes like this so if i were to join the locus of these points i obtain two distinct curves this one is called as the saturation vapor curve or line and this one is called as a saturation liquid line so corresponding to higher pressures this keeps on happening okay so let us now see what happens when we keep on increasing the pressure all the line seems to merge and then there occurs a point where there is no more scope there is no more scope to have any saturation and so the system goes directly from liquid state to vapor state so this is vapor this is liquid in order to go from liquid to vapor we had to pass through this saturation zone however at a certain pressure we directly transition from liquid to vapor so what do you really call the thing there is no it's just called as a fluid there is no way to call it a liquid or a vapor okay so this corresponding pressure is called as the critical pressure it is the pressure 
below which you cannot form liquid. So you need to achieve some lower pressure in order to have this two phase business going on. Without having a pressure lower than this, you are always in that fluid zone where it is simply one homogeneous fluid fluid vapor thing going on, liquid vapor thing going on. Okay, so this point is called as the critical point. So for water, the critical pressure is twenty two point zero nine. Mega Pascal. Above this pressure, there is no liquid water. It is all just one fluid. So, for pure substances, the minimum amount of properties required are two, two independent properties. are required in this case for example the temperature and vo volume they were two independent properties in this case temperature and volume also we can specify the system in terms of temperature and pressure however for a given pressure in this zone there is no change in the temperature the pressure is also fixed the temperature also fixed but the specific volume is changing so we can only choose any one of temperature or pressure because corresponding to a fixed pressure corresponding to a fixed pressure there is a unique temperature inside the saturation dome this zone inside is called as the so this is called as a saturation dome inside the saturation dome for a given for a given pressure this temperature is fixed and thus inside the dome we cannot specify temperature and pressure as two independent properties outside the dome you can obviously specify temperature differently pressure differently you can have liquid heated to some temperature but at some other pressure you can decrease the pressure increase the pressure for a liquid but the moment it goes into a saturation zone for a given pressure you cannot change the temperature so inside the saturation dome the independent property that is required at this stage that we know is the specific volume the specific volume helps us to understand exactly what state the fluid is in is it in this state this state or which state so the specific volume is what helps us to identify the property of the pure substance in the saturation dome again outside the saturation dome the pressure and temperature can vary independently i need not keep the pressure fixed it is only inside the dome where if the pressure is fixed the temperature is fixed the pressure is the saturation pressure the temperature is saturation temperature i cannot independently vary the saturation temperature and saturation pressure given a saturation pressure saturation temperature is fixed here i can vary so you can have a gas at some pressure and some temperature you can cool the gas so temperature can reduce at the same pressure no problem but the moment it becomes two phase the moment it reaches the saturation dome you cannot do that so inside the dome how can we do a calculation how do we really define the property so here it is pure liquid here it is pure vapor so the total volume is the total volume occupied by the fluid plus total volume occupied by the liquid and we know that the specific volume is equal to total volume by the total mass so this is equal to volume specific volume of the fluid multiplied by the mass of the fluid plus volume occup uh, specific volume of the uh, of the so this should be g so fluid and gas this is the convention this will be vg times m of g so the volume occupied by the gas is equal to vo specific volume of the gas multiplied by the mass of the gas 
Okay. So, total volume is equal to total mass multiplied by the net specific volume of the mixture of the gas. So, suppose the point is here, it is the mixture of this and this, the property is a mixture of this property and this property. So, this is equal to V f m f plus V g m g. Let us divide everything by the mass. So, the specific volume of the state is equal to specific volume of the fluid times m f by m plus specific volume of the vapor times m g by m. So, if we define the quality x as the mass of vapor divided by total mass of system, then the specific volume of that mixture is equal to V f times. So, this quantity this is essentially equal to m g by m mass of vapor. So, vapor means gas. So, this is x. So, obviously, one m f divided by m will be equal to 1 minus x. This is very easy to show. If x is equal to m g by m, then m f will be 1 minus x. So, v f times 1 minus x plus v g times x. So, this is how the property x is able to quantify where the point actually lies. So, if x is equal to 0, then v is equal to v f. So, it is in the fluid. So, this point corresponds to x equal to 0. If x equal to 1, then v corresponds to v g. So, this point is x equal to 1. So, you put simply x equal to 1, you see this term goes. So, it simply becomes v g. So, for any other condition x lies between 0 to 1, v is less than v f and so v is less than v g and greater than v f. So, this is the mixture. So, this is how you find out the mixture, uh, the mixture property. So, in the later classes we will see how to find the energy in the similar manner, but the important thing is this quality. Inside the dome, we cannot specify temperature and pressure independently and thus we must specify the quality of the substance. The quality if it is 0, then it is said to be pure liquid. The quality if it is equal to 1, then it is said to be pure vapor. Anything in between specifies where the point lies. The pressure and the quality can be one of the ways it can be specified. The temperature and the quality or the temperature and specific volume. Once we know the specific volume, we can also find out the quality. We will see all this in due course of many various examples, but the point is inside the dome, the pressure and temperature cannot be varied independently. They have to be bounded because during that phase change, the temperature is locked. Given a pressure, given a pressure, the temperature is locked. We cannot play with that anymore. So, we conclude the lecture here. Professor Shoman Chakravarti will help you to read the thermodynamic tables, how to make sense of the properties which are available in various books. So, the reference book is Sontag, Fundamentals of Thermodynamics by Sontag, Van Weyland. It is a very comprehensive book and this will be distributed through the online portal as well. Thank you. I will see you next time.